Well, Iraq and Syria are rebuilding their relations. Iraq's prime minister is the first Iraqi leader to visit Damascus since the start of the Syrian civil war in 2011. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad greeted Mohammed Shia al-Sudani. Among issues being discussed are strengthening economic ties and the security of their shared border. It's the latest sign of improving regional relations. Syria was also recently readmitted to the Arab League after a 12-year suspension. Well, let's bring in our correspondent, uh, Mahmoud Abdul Wahid. He's in Baghdad and he joins us live now. Mahmoud, as we were saying, this is the first official visit by an Iraqi leader to Syria in, what, 13 years? Talk us through the significance. Well, Nastasia, the significance of this visit uh, it lies in the fact that both leaders uh, seem to be keen to build on its momentum to break the isolation uh, uh, both countries have suffered from uh, for years. As you know, that this is the first visit by an Iraqi leader to Syria since 2010. Then, uh, since the, the, the last visit by uh, former Prime Minister Nouri uh, al-Maliki. As you know, that uh, Iraq wants to uh, bring back home its uh, uh, good relationships, its comprehensive relationships with its uh, neighbors. And also, Iraq was one of the first uh, countries to support uh, the Syrian government and the return of Syria to the Arab League and the participation of Syria in the Arab summit in Jeddah last uh, May. As you know that both governments are backed by uh, the same ally in the region, by uh, Iran. And uh, Iraq wants also uh, to uh, support the Syrian government as it did in the last uh, or the seventh conference on supporting Syria and the region that was held in Brussels in uh, June. As you know that Iraq has been always one of the uh, strongest backers of the Syrian uh, regime. And also Iraq has been always calling on the international community to lift sanctions in Syria and also to uh, facilitate the entry of uh, aids to the Syrian uh, people. So mm -hmm. it seemed that both leaders, Bashar al-Assad and Mohammed Shia Sudani, are keen to build on the momentum of this visit to break the isolation their countries have been suffering uh, from. Well, clearly some strong optics here, but what are the most important issues the two leaders will cover, do you think? Well, definitely mutual interests and mutual challenges facing both countries. As you know, that uh, terrorism on top of the agenda, uh, the infiltration of terror elements on the border, as you know, that 600 kilometers is the border line between Syria and Iraq. The infiltration of uh, terrorism, uh, drug trafficking, uh, people uh, trafficking, smuggling, uh, the issue also pertaining to a major concern for both countries, which is water. As you know, that the Euphrates River, which uh, goes through Syria and into Iraq, and that uh, stems from Turkey. Both countries have major concerns over what they call the damming programs by Turkey, which has halted major parts of the water flows into both countries, and that has resulted in uh, serious ramifications in both countries, especially with climate change and with scorching summer temperatures. Also, uh, the issue of security. As you know, that both countries, they have armed groups in the north of both countries engaging in conflict with Turkey. So addressing, they want to address Turkey on both issues, on the water issue and on the security issue as well. Last but not least, the refugees, the whole camp in Syria and the Iraqi refugees in Syria. So uh, they also want, as the prime minister of Iraq mentioned during the press conference, that they want to enhance uh, economic and trade relationships between the two countries and also to uh, regain the comprehensive uh, relations between the two countries in the region. Mahmoud Abdel Wahid across that visit for us from Baghdad. Thank you, Mahmoud. Well, let's now bring in Marwan Kabbalan. He's the head of policy analysis at the Arab Center for Research and Policy Studies. Marwan, great to have you back with us. Thank you. It's been really quite the diplomatic comeback, hasn't it, for President Assad? Uh, I do recall, though, even during the war, senior Iraqi officials did maintain some relations with, with his regime. I think you have to differentiate between uh, two phases in the relationship between the two countries from 2011 
The first one under Nur al-Maliki, the relationship was, was good because the two countries, the two regimes, they believed that they were fighting the same war against ISIL, against uh, other uh, armed groups. But then when Maliki uh, actually left office uh, and Haider Abadi became prime minister, uh, the relationship between the two countries started to cool down a little bit because the American pressure on the Iraqi government uh, uh, actually was important on one hand and Iran did not have enough influence over Haider Abadi. But now because the pro-Iran forces are back in power in Iraq, so we can see that the Iraqi prime minister is coming, is coming back actually to visit Damascus and have this uh, sort of improvement in the relationship between, uh, between the two countries. So uh, it's important, but it's not surprising as the pro-Iran forces are now in power in Baghdad. Sure. Well, even if we go back a few decades, Iraq and it was Syria. much more complicated the yes, relationship. Much more, yeah, absolutely. much more complicated. Because the two parties, very deep the, the, yeah, absolutely, the the Ba'ath Party was ruling in the two countries, in Baghdad and in Damascus, yeah. and the two wings of the Ba'ath Party were in like a very tough uh, 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 confrontation over who is the legitimate representative of the of the Ba'athism in the Arab in the Arab world. So the relationship was very difficult at that time between Saddam Hussein and yeah. Hafez al-Assad. Uh, but then, I mean, you know, after the U.S. invasion of Iraq and uh, the toppling of the Saddam Hussein regime, uh, the formation of the Iraqi government by pro-Iran forces, and Iran is supporting Bashar al-Assad on the other hand, so that actually brought the two countries closer uh, together. But that did not mean also that there were no uh, difficulties in the relationship between the two countries, because Nouri al-Maliki, for example, in 2009, he accused the regime of President Bashar al-Assad of uh, uh, plotting uh, the, the so-called in Iraq, the Black Wednesday, yeah. in which a car bomb actually went off in front of the Iraqi finan uh, finance ministry, uh, leading to the, uh, uh, leaving more than 300 people uh, killed. Uh, so uh, Maliki at that time accused Syria of actually blotting that, and he went to the United Nations to call for establishing a special tribunal in order to uh, uh, to bring the, the, the Syrian government accountable to that. To the, uh, but then when, when, when the revolution started in Syria in 2011, everything changed, and Syria and Iraq believed that they were fighting the same enemy. Iran put pressure on the two, on the two sides in order to come together and, and form what they called a united front against uh, extremists. And, of course, they share a 600-kilometer-long border. I imagine the White House will be watching today's events very closely. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the, the main issue in the visit by, uh, by uh, Sudani today is border security, because mm. this is something really uh, uh, important for, I mean, for both countries, but mainly for, uh, for Iraq. Uh, of course, I mean, the two countries will be trying actually to develop their economic relationship, but then we have the U.S. sanctions on Syria that will uh, make it difficult for any Iraqi government to develop the economic relationship with, uh, with Damascus uh, in, a, in a meaningful way. Uh, so uh, we don't expect much improvement actually here, but I think we'll see more coordination on, the, on, on border security and also on the issue of water, as your correspondent mm. mentioned um, uh, and during uh, reporting from, from Baghdad. The two countries are suffering from water shortages because uh, Turkey is not giving enough water. Turkey is controlling the, the sources of yeah. the Euphrates and Tigris, yeah. the two main rivers uh, flowing down into Syria and into Iraq as well. And really quite the statement, um, such a high-level visit. Marwan Kabbalan there, the head of policy analysis at the Arab Centre for Research and Policy Studies. Always great to chat to you, Marwan. Thanks Thank for joining us again. Thank you for having me.